Hey, good morning guys, I'm the Tech Prepper. Hope you're all doing well. I'm in route to, oh, just ran over something. Shit, I took it with me. I'm in route to the McDowell Mountain Regional Park and we're gonna be doing a field exercise today for voice and digital. The digital piece is a continuation of a field exercise we did uh, not too long ago on the channel and we're just trying to improve our digital communication skills to pass administrative traffic. We'll talk about what that is and why we want to do that uh, later on this video. Uh, but where we're going is basically the home of an endurance race called the Havelina 100. It's a 100 mile endurance race. And uh, given that there's very little cell uh, infrastructure in that area, uh, us as amateur radio operators support the event uh, deployed at various aid stations. Now, typically I am a man portable operator. But today I get the luxury of bringing my Jeep, so my gear is going to be a little bit different. I'm bringing a lot more stuff. So stick around if you want to see my comms gear, how we train, and kind of get a sense for the morning. So stick around, and uh, it's going to be fun today. Grab a cup of coffee or tea, or a beer if it's late in your neck of the woods. All right, so per our comm plan, we have decided to monitor two frequencies while we're in route. I'm using the Kenwood D710GA, which is a beautiful mobile rig that sadly is discontinued. There are actually three of these on the International Space Station, so it should give you a sense for uh, how wonderful this radio is. Uh, on one frequency, I'm monitoring the ARA repeater system, and we've been using that to rag chew or just talk uh, on the way down, so it's been fun chatting with the boys. Once I hit the park entrance, we've all decided to switch over to Simplex. Uh, I'm using uh, figures 147.550 with the guys, uh, so it should be fun. So actually, I have three tenths of a mile. We'll go early and see if we can get someone on the air. This is KT1RUN operating Simplex. I am entering the park. Is anybody on the air? track. I'm on the north end of the parking lot. As you come into the dirt parking lot, turn right. WB4 is okay. All right. All right. Good morning, guys. We're about getting ready to start here. Uh, this is Paul, KQ7V. Good morning. And uh, Paul wants a tour, so I figured we'd go ahead and show everybody what we're doing. Uh, so, Paul, the first thing I've got here is I have a pre-guide system for the uh, tarp shelter. So it permanently is actually affixed to the, uh, the roll cage in there and wound up when not in use. And then I use these um, S-clip carabiners to secure it to a USGI poncho, which serves a couple of different purposes. And then my normal trekking poles act as the uh, support with more S-clip carabiners, 550 paracord with a taut line hitch. So I can go ahead and adjust the pull and then just a couple of cheap tent stakes. So, this will provide enough shelter for uh, the operations for today. Uh, inside, since we have the luxury of the vehicle, I've got the folding table, the cheap uh, Harbor Freight uh, chair. We've got the uh, comms plan, the FT-8900 man pack, and then the uh, Panasonic CF-20 Toughbook, all wired up for digital with the DigiRig Mobile. Whip antenna is hitting the poncho, not going to worry about that too much. And then I have a little bit of coffee going on the Esbit stove. All right, guys, so let me give you a brief tour of what we're about to do. Uh, so we're out here on location at the uh, staging site in the McDowell Mountain Regional Park. I have all of my digital gear set up, the CF-20 Toughbook, my FT-8900. I have our FL Digi and FL Message suite running. I've done videos. I'll put the digital series up here on the screen so you guys can have some contacts and look at that actually context. Um, but our goal here is to transmit two types of traffic. Uh, the first is voice or what we'll call tactical and that is for passing communication that is required to be acted on immediately. On station arrival, uh, station departure, medical, those type of things. We're planning on using digital and the NBMS software suite as a means to pass administrative traffic. Now this is traffic that um, does not need to be acted on right away and is largely for reporting use. So I'm not sure if I mentioned it in the intro, but uh, a list of runners that did not start the race or dropped out, and then also a um, runners as they come through various aid stations like where I'm positioned right now. So we'll track uh, time of arrival, uh, the race, gender, male or female, 
um, and that's about it. So it's really just for us to practice the ability, can we reliably send uh, messages uh, to and from each other for administrative purposes using digitally while also having our primary voice net. All right, I'll see what I can record and uh, we'll do a little bit of an after action report uh, at some point in this video. Stick around. Start line. Start line. On station, KT1RUN. All right, guys, I think we're recording. I'm trying to capture the screen. I'll take another picture here just in case. This is no fun. If anybody ever wants to help me film, let me know. Uh, but uh, we're just doing some test exchanges right now. And you can see I have an ICS 213 form there. I'm gonna go ahead and try to send one out myself. So the first thing I'm gonna do is go over to FL message. I'm gonna to go to form. We're gonna do custom and I'm gonna launch our uh, custom form I created for this event. So we'll go edit form. It should launch a browser window, which it did. I'm gonna put in my call sign, KT1RUN. And my call sign for this event is uh, start line. I want to address this to uh, net control, actually to everybody. Uh, I've added all of the uh, other call signs here or tactical call signs. Uh, for ease of use and the message type that I want to send again this is all custom is did not start and I'm just doing a free form message so I'm going to say one two three four and runners five six seven eight and zero zero one two and let's do 42 42 since that's an awesome number and we're going to go ahead and send it actually clicking submit form doesn't send it uh, what it does do is post it into um, our message here, and now I'm going to go ahead and send. And we have to save this form. Start line. Start line, go. Can you acknowledge receipt of my first test transmission? Test transmission received and appears to be in proper format. Thank you, KQ7V. KT1RUN. How about that, guys? All right, more good stuff coming. Let's get this show on the road, peeps. Start line, we're gonna send it to net control and our message type will do other and i'm just going to put when are we starting and i'm getting a message coming through right now guys I'm going to submit this form And before we send my message, let's see who we got. It looks like it was from WB4ZKA, my Elmer Mike. And this video is gonna be a shit show. So the message is runner. Dennis Petrie lost his runner bib. Please check the race director to look up his runner and notify rest stop two so we can tell runner from net control. And this is going to rest stop one. Very cool stuff. I don't want to belabor the point here, but point is we are kind of spread out, not as far as I would have liked, but uh, we're able now to send messages uh, digitally using a custom form. And we're able to uh, run the rest of the, the uh, tactical traffic using uh, voice on Simplex. All right, we're going to get together for an after action report later and we'll talk a little bit more about our experiences. Just packing up. Now this is real field expedient deployment. We are literally done with the man pack here. Don't listen to the other channels when they tell you they're field expedient. The Tech Prepper Man Pack feels expedient.
Field Expedient Coffee. All right, guys, let's go ahead and jump into a quick after action report. I'll try to time box it to five minutes. So hopefully you enjoyed kind of following us along the day. Uh, that whole exercise actually took about uh, three hours in that time. We passed 33 messages. Uh, we were largely successful with the exception of one station where we had uh, some issues. We'll talk about that in a second. And the reason why we're doing this is because we support public service events where the traffic is largely voice. In fact, it's only voice FM traffic. And like I mentioned before, we have some administrative tra traffic in the form of reporting uh, that takes a lot of time to relay over the air and oftentimes requires a lot of fills and retransmissions and just causes more congestion on um, our local simplex frequency. So our goal was to uh, have a second exercise, which this was, on location at the course we typically work and see if we can bring in digital. And this time, unlike the first event, everybody brought their own station gear. Let's go ahead and take a look at their gear. All right, guys, I don't have the GoPro here, so we'll see how it works. These are the clowns I'm working with today. We are behind schedule, so we have one operator in his van with another CF20. Hey, Mike, this is my Elmer. He's a fantastic guy and has a cool uh, scamp. Uh... I even have a Elmer's head haircut. He has, what Elmer is it, uh, what do you say, a, a face for radio? A face for radio and a voice for print. Awesome. Uh, and then he has an 8800. I don't want to peek too far over. over. here. And he's got a 8800. It's similar to mine, except it's just the dual bounder, which is perfect. And then over here, we got uh, George. Sorry about the wind. And he's running the fancy IC705 and a tablet. Hey, George. Morning. And then Paul, KQ7V, you met Paul. Paul's all set up in his uh, back of his uh, ride here. What are you running, Paul? Um, I've got a Yesu FTM 400 that I'm using today. Very good. Um, so. What are you using for your uh, digital interface? Uh -huh. Just got a very simple Lenovo laptop, uh, running FL Digi and FL Message. No, like sound card. Uh, is it running oh, uh, Signal Link or? Yeah, sound card. Sorry, I'm sound card. I'm yeah. For sound card, I'm running the Signal Link USB. Very got cool. Configured for this. Ooh, and that's fancy. What do you got back there for uh, for power management? Oh, I've just got um, one of the uh, PowerWorks battery boxes. I've got it set up so that it'll it'll run my uh, power my laptop, the radio, and Signal Link. All right, so as you can see, there was a mix of different gear there. Uh, myself and my Elmer Mike, we were basically running identical systems. I was running my FT8900, he was running his 8800, and we were both interfacing that with the CF20 Toughbook with the DigiRig Mobile. My buddy George was the station that had the most difficulty uh, as he was running the new cool kid on the block radio, the IC705 with a Surface tablet. and. The big claim uh, on that kind of setup is that you could do everything wirelessly. I personally like wires, um, so there was a lot of issues getting the audio to work properly. In fact, he uh, only was partially successful on being able to uh, decode uh, messages. Um, he wasn't able to decode until we switched to MT63 for him, so he's still working through his audio issues with the IC705. And then Paul was running uh, the tried and true signal link USB and we had no issues. So we succeeded in, uh, for the most part, everybody bringing their own gear and testing and being able to pass messages. Uh, we did run into to a couple of issues outside of the IC705 and that was namely the bugs. Uh, we weren't expecting any bugs out here and um, I'm a bad prepper. I actually took out my bug spray literally the week before to clean out the Jeep. Um, we also ran into a few little nuances with the software, uh, mostly in uh, when we received a FL message, 
uh, and then went ahead and would try to edit that message and send it back out, we were sending it back out as the same file name that we received it as. So since we encoded our call signs in our file name, sometimes we would retransmit uh, a message with the other station's call sign. And we figured out a workaround for that uh, basically in the software now. Um, if we wanna make sure that we have the correct file name that we're sending out, we just go to File, Save As, and the software will go ahead and put our call sign. The second thing we found out uh, with that respect is since I created a custom form where I include the call sign as a field, we are technically being FCC legal by transmitting our call signs in the clear. So instead of configuring uh, FL message and FL uh, digi with our call signs, we're actually moving to put in our tactical call sign like start line, finish line, mobile one, net. And what that allows us to do is when we save um, these forms, uh, either when we send them out or receive them, the file that comes back to us now has our tactical call sign. So after the event, we can actually sort all the messages we received using the tactical call signs. And that also allows us to really handle the shift changes very well. Uh, the whole purpose for you new guys to have tactical call signs is if we support an event that takes 24 hours and there are three uh, shifts, um, I may start the first shift with my call sign and then someone else will relieve me and they come in. So that station always will have the same tactical call regardless of the operator. So that's our lesson learned. We're basically going to start encoding the tactical call sign into uh, the saved um, message forms. Uh, on the form topic, I went ahead and created a custom form in FL message. This is my second time doing it. The first one was for integration for my... Um, MCOM tool software project. Uh, and the nice thing about that is that um, it was very specific to our event and we locked down the set of fields and data that needed to be sent. So for data consistency, um, you really couldn't screw things up. You only had two forms to fill out that, or two fields to fill out. One was your call sign, which you're not gonna screw up unless you're an idiot, um, and your message payload. Everything else, the to field, the from field, the type of message, it was all a lockdown, and in fact, it was based on our comms plan. This is also the second uh, exercise that we did where I put together a uh, eight-page communications plan. Take a look at my other video on how I did that. It's basically the same thing, and um, just uh, it, it worked out well, and I also created a field manual uh, that allowed us to validate uh, everything we were doing uh, in the field. Uh, let's see, am I missing any other notes here? Oh, yeah, one other thing to note um, in terms of next steps, uh, we were very successful with this deployment. Um, the ARA is giving us a hard time in being able to use the linked repeater system to experiment more with um, sending digital traffic. So we're trying to work with a local club and get some of their repeater time and have a fixed window where we can start to do uh, a routine net so we can practice. Once we nail all of this down, the communication protocol, the types of forms, we're gonna probably present that back to the ARA. If not, we're gonna go ahead and when we do our uh, public service season, we're gonna start to introduce some of these techniques ourselves and just do what we're going to do. Um, with that said, I know this video isn't for everybody. I do apologize for the quality of the video. It was incredibly difficult for me to focus on uh, supporting the training event and filming and recording everything. So uh, it is what it is. I lost a lot of footage, footage that would have been cool in the process. Uh, but with that said, I'm pretty sure by the time this video releases, I'm gonna be within single digits of 10,000. So the next video after this one, don't miss it. I'm gonna be giving the Iluens HD1 away and I'm gonna do a big thank you for everybody supporting me over the last uh, two years and change. So with that said, guys, I'm the Tech Prepper. Be strong, be safe, and be prepared.